This is Christopher Smith with a Liberty Minute. Hello America. Today is part three in the final installment of our exploration into immigration reform and enforcement solutions. Recapping just briefly where we were over the last two, uh, we shed light on debunking the social justice rhetoric used by liberals to sideline opposition to their agenda advancement. Then secondly, we suggested policy enhancements that aren't too far off from the actual laws that aren't being enforced right now. Then made additional suggestions that would allow us as a nation to put a severe dent in the influx of illegals crossing our border. Now, many of you may not be aware that earlier this past week, there was a poll of Homeland Security officers along with ICE officers, roughly 7,000 of them in number, loudly and boldly expressed a vote of no confidence in the leadership of those two agencies, mainly a scathing critique. This is no doubt an indictment of the Obama administration's continued backhand side showing with dissident groups such as La Raza, Maldef, and the NAACP to think they're going to consider another round of amnesty. Americans aren't too happy with that one. So this invariably brings up the next question, because you're going to hear it from liberals. Well, Reagan did it. How can we can't do it? That's exactly what the social justice minion foaming at the mouth in the back of a coffee house will bring up as if it's supposed to make his point all right. I'd look them square in those beady little THC enhanced eyes, because liberals hate that, and exude to them confidently conservatives never claim to be perfect. We're known to make a mistake here and there. But the difference between us and you liberals act like someone has issues because they don't agree with your myopic bent. Conservatives will just say, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And that's really the whole point. Now, historically, there have been instances wrought entirely out of the extreme mitigating circumstance of why you would allow an amnesty for a group of aliens. Now, one such instance did occur in the early 80s. Remember the situation with the Ethiopian Jews that were airlifted out of Northern Africa because of persecution? So Israel and some Northern European countries delighted in taking some of these displaced foreign nationals. And that was perfectly understandable. That instance made sense. Now, what's going on with Mexico next door? You can't make a lick of sense of this nonsense just because they're next door for some odd reason and won't stand up for their own rights and defy the drug lords and a corrupt government to shape their own government into a productive republic instead of the twisted, misplaced ideas we're supposed to somehow take them on just because they're next door. Um, uh, you'd be terribly, awfully confused on that one. The fact of the matter is, we're not bigots because a group of lazy ass upstarts call us bigots. Bigots exist everywhere. Our platform is not bigoted. They are the ones who are living for their skin color instead of with it like a productive citizen would. We don't owe them that. But what we do owe is our children who have a right as sovereign citizens of the United States to inherit a nation that will take them somewhere instead of a nation that will take something from them. Remember, liberals attacked us. So the burden of proof is on them to show that these nutty ideals of theirs are even remotely valid. Well, we've been waiting for the better part of 97 years and haven't seen anything yet. And we're still waiting. What we need to do is elect citizens who are loyal to us, not loyal to their parties. Loyal to the Constitution instead of precedents, procedures, and policies. When we have a large enough number of constitutional-minded Americans in office to control the technocrats who have bamboozled us into thinking that their procedures, traditions, and policies and other technocratic malaise are equally valid as constitutional law, only then will we begin to reclaim our nation. What we need to do is shut down these ethnicity-based caucuses on Capitol Hill. The Constitution clearly protects what you are, not who you become. Our rights are derived from a sovereign creator, not a sovereign government. There is no need for a redundant specialized segment of specifically race-oriented caucuses to exist within our own government. That may work in the private sector where it belongs, we call it marketing to ethnic groups, but it has no place in government. We start with these simple but straightforward steps and we will restore American prosperity and return a future to our children. Because I don't want to give my children the future that's shaping up right now. What do you think? I'm Christopher Smith.